guys, Lenny Reed, Down About Diesel Products, and I'm here with uh, Donovan Harris. In my phone, it's actually Donovan Beep. Harris. <laughs> sure, he knows it well. She won't actually say the word, though. It's weird. Well, no. No, you're just, Lenny. you're just Lenny in my phone. I just guess. Lenny? Yeah, I never thought of that. Huh. I'll yeah. figure something out, don't know I, I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I need more attention than that. Yeah. So, Donovan and I have been buddies for a long time. Met Donovan. 2007, 2009? 2008-ish. 2008, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I won't argue with you. You always nope. win. Nope. Uh, we started by uh, your brother, the little yep. short bed racer truck. Yep. We put a common rail in, that was started as a half ton, didn't it? Yeah, it was a half ton short box regular cab that we bought at a Portland, Oregon, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, that's where it come from. There we go, there we go. Turned it into a little short bed racer. It was fun. And uh, throughout the years, we've just had more projects, more projects, more projects. Then you bought the old truck from uh, Peyton and them? Yeah, H&S Motorsports, yeah. So then we worked on the UCC truck together. And we are, as a team, the most winningest fourth place champions <laughs> in the history of UCC yes. ever. Nobody will beat us. Nope. Nobody will ever get as many fourth place as us. <laughs> Not unless ever. we try again. <laughs> but if we try again, we could actually like get more force. Yeah, we could. Uh, if we try harder, we might get third. Third. <laughs> I don't know. It's always like we're a year behind. We just don't. I just don't think we try hard enough. I do. I don't. Yeah. If I tried harder, <laughs> I think it's just your lack of maybe, communication. Maybe you need to come and help me. No. no well, now the truck's in Josh's town, so yeah. Yeah. At any rate, so Donovan's here. It's uh, was it December second? And electricians are downstairs. The guys are downstairs crating up uh, Armadillo number three. And uh, unique story behind Armadillo number three. It, uh, it's wired for 50 hertz. Well, everything in America is 60 hertz. So we had to get this like step up transformer because during COVID, um, the parts to build another Armadillo were uh, non-existent. So in order to get an Armadillo, we had to just get one that was wired for the United Kingdom. And then it showed up, and we had to step up and buy this transformer. And now you're taking it home. I'm yeah. so happy. Yeah, it's going to be cool. We talk about it lots over the years kind of thing, but never come to fruition. But now it's happening. There's a lot of pieces that have to be done in order for that to really work. Uh, bore scope, you know, like we had a bore scope that came out of the medical industry. And getting those things has basically become impossible. So then we worked with, uh, it was Hawkeye, wasn't it, Matt? Hawkeye and gradient lens. Hawkeye and gradient lens. Yeah. And now they've got a package, so you'll have your own bore scope up there. Yes, sir. Because that's critical. Um, you know, when you get a set of injectors in for testing, you don't just throw them in the test stand because if they're contaminated, you're going to contaminate your fluid, and all of the injectors after that are going to get contaminated as well. So it's solenoid off, nozzle off, inspect, make sure everything's clean, and that's where you start. That's step one. That's getting on first base. Um, step two is going to be uh, possibly cleaning up the injectors, like tearing them all apart, washing them, putting them back together, calibrating, and then testing. Um, you guys have been here for two days. Justin is downstairs, yeah. and he's picked up some good skills. And, of course, he's always got the, uh, the hotline to get to Skylar or myself to try and get things answered if he needs help. Yeah. But on an angle of why is Dynamite Diesel doing this, or why are we allowing this, or why are we promoting this, we are going to promote this. This is going to be a thing of our future. Donovan, being in Canada, whenever we ship products to Canada, there's always somewhat of a glitch. There's always a hang. There's always customs. There's always tariffs and taxes and things like that. So this will give everybody in Canada somebody to get to for testing and distribution that can actually like look at your old stuff or look at your possible warranties, get it checked out up there without having to come to America, and then uh, pay for tariffs and taxes and all the other stuff. Or now if you need to get something to Donovan, you're in Canada, you can get it to him overnight. It never comes to me overnight. So it's just a good angle. Yeah, no, it's really good. I don't know if anybody else, in, as far as the diesel goes, that you can balance a set of injectors like we're going to be able to. And, you know, it's, they've set up the test stand, so it's pretty foolproof. 
you know, so it, it, it makes it real simple for us. So it should be good, you know, as far as helping the industry and helping everybody up in Canada with, you know, with problems with their injectors for sure. I, I would say it's a, I think it's going to be a great program because now you're going to get a bunch of nozzles. You're going to get a bunch of dry fire bodies, meaning they've been assembled here, stacked here. We've, we've done all the stuff that we do to our own injectors. We just have this, whenever we go through do remands, we basically put plastic bagged injectors inside of a box and there might be, you know, 60 or 100 or 110, 120 of them. You're going to get them like that. Then when you have a customer that wants to get a 50 or a 75 or a 90 or whatever, then you're going to bolt the nozzles to that body up there. You're going to run it on the stand and calibrate it there. You'll give them, you know, just for now, it's going to be handwritten flow sheet. And down the road, that customer is going to go. One of the things that you have a massive advantage over anybody with like just the little green 205 is when you get a green 205, goes through the test plan, and then it gives you red X's or a green check mark, and it'll show you what your number is, but it doesn't tell you like why your number would be there. It doesn't They don't give you a lot of explanation because they really don't want you to open up the injector and fix it or figure it out or tweak it. It's either good or bad. Yeah. And as you guys have picked up here in the last couple of days, adjusting those parameters, you're gonna have the ability to adjust some of those parameters and get things dialed in and figured out pretty easily for them. So it's really gonna give Canada uh, just another arm of dynamite diesel products up there So you guys can be able to get our stuff and get it calibrated and for those of you that don't have our stuff But you need to get things tested uh, We've set Donovan up with a test plan. Do you remember how many microseconds that plan came out to you? Uh, yeah, it's what's well, 800 microseconds on the 5.9 at 200% and then the 6.7 is 150% 6.7 and that was uh Cummins. Okay. All right. So basically, for anybody up there that's got a really large injector from any brand, you'll be able to send them to Donovan. The test stand that he has, we're going to limit it like 275 millimeters cubed to make sure the test stand doesn't get broken. That being said, we had to give him a, kind of a crafty little plan. So it's 800 US yep. at 160 MPA for the yep. 5.9s. Yes. So it's not going to beat up the stand really good. And this is true that you're not going to be able to run that injector down the track at that low of a parameter possibly. But this will give you a spot that you can actually go and have them run. And if they work, they work. And if they don't, they don't. At that point, they're going to have to come down here. And then you've seen the Skylar machine. Yeah. So Skylar's machine is massive. It's got great big parts inside of it. It's like generator slash like steamboat kind of stuff. Um, it's designed by the factory to take the beating of a thousand millimeters cubed. And it lives. It, it does it as fine. So we can basically run any of those injectors at any test parameter down here possible, but this does give you guys something that you're very accessible to just to see if there is a problem with the injector. And I think Justin and you both learned enough about nozzles that finding some of the little things, why they white smoke, why they misfire, why they do all of it, you guys are gonna be able to help out people up there. Yeah, cause like to date right now, like when we get, them te if we get something tested up there, it's just, it's a pass or fail. They don't, they can't tell you why it failed or why it's doing this or if it's contaminated or nothing. They just, it's pass or fail, you need a new one. They can't. So hopefully, you know, we're not gonna know everything right off the, the bat, but we've learned enough in the last couple of days and over the years that we can help customers with problems, not just, no, it failed, sorry. Yeah. You need a new injector. Yeah. Well, it'll be nice because even if you or your customer has a problem, you get a flow sheet, you get an email with some pictures, things like that. And if there's other issues or other questions, you can always reach out to us. Yeah. Or even the customer can be like, hey, it was just an armor, and they just gave me a flow sheet that says this, this, and this. You know, what's, what's that all mean? What, you know, we can help out too. So that's the whole thing. With, with COVID doing what it's done to the marketplace, just the overall worldwide marketplace, the supply chains have gotten really chinky, and customers have to drive. They, they can't just own trucks. It's uh, not to take a day. Well, parts are just getting made wherever they can get them. Like yeah. you used to buy parts from here, and this is what you use for years, but now they don't have them, so then you're just searching other areas, and you're, you're using parts that you don't have experience with. Pistons, rings, Yeah, pistons, gaskets. rings, you know, like we use lots of molly, and all of a sudden they're short, and so we're looking for somewhere else, and it's like, wow, we've never used these, but other guys say, oh, I use them all the time, and we're like, well, you know, so we're trying them because we don't have other options, but, you know, it's, it's still you know, you're taking, taking the risk as a business owner. Well, as a business owner and as a manufacturer, those guys are having to seek out other jobbers to help fill their backlogs as well, Even, right? Yeah. 
Yep. So, you know, we're seeing big brands, big boxes, big names, products are coming into us and we're like, that's not how it used to look. Yeah. That's not, that doesn't fit like that used to fit. That doesn't work like that used to work. This is going to give you and I the ability to continue servicing, because you've got a lot of like oil patch workers. Yeah. And time, yeah. those guys can't be out of a truck for three weeks or a month. No, it's, it's a, there's a tight schedule when we book stuff in, it's a tight schedule. Like when they book their truck in Monday, they want it Monday night. Yeah. They don't want it back Thursday or Friday because they got to go to work and their truck's making money. This gives you the ability to bring it in, uh, pop the injectors out, run the injectors, calibrate if necessary, or replace with whatever size you need that day. Yeah, and plus we'll just have stock on the shelf. It's been hard for us to get stuff up there, so we'll just, our plan is to have it on the shelf so that when a guy calls, yeah, we have it. You know, and if, if we don't have it or it's something customized, you know, we can call down here and we can get it generally within two to three days. Lenny's pretty good at that stuff. If, if it's a panic, you know, he can, you know, kind of stop things going and, and get things rolling for other people. So he's always been good in that department. Well, we've got you, we've got the Dirty Diesel folks, and then my Canadian cousin Brent, I'm going to put him in Vancouver, and he's going to have a stuff there as well. Because trying to get, like, all of your cores in is fairly difficult. So Brent being in Vancouver... Like we've got some, we've got, we've got some transportation logistics that we're trying to get better. Oh, yeah. And Matt and I are working on different ideas with like how to get them here as cheap as possible. Um, Brent is like 15 minutes to Sumas, Washington. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. we're working on like a, a, him driving them over the border and then we're going through a broker on that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that way it's not quite so expensive to get cores back down here and things like that. Yeah. So because there's just the country is big and there's a lot of trucks up there. And so far, we've had very, very little penetration in the country. But with as bad as supply chain's been, even with us getting blank nozzles, that's painful. Right now, we're waiting on more blank nozzles. We're constantly waiting on blank nozzles. So, you know, there may be a future plan where we're working with more than one supplier on blank nozzles as well. Um, and we might, who knows, have to just endeavor into uh, possibly investing into the machinery so we can be the only people in the United States of America that can just make bar stock turn into a nozzle. And that might be a year down the road, might be two years down the road, might be never, I might die first. But if the supply chain issues don't get any better, we're gonna be forced to come out swinging harder and more accurately than ever. And that's just, that's how we have to roll. Like little companies, we gotta stick together, keep the employees trained, keep the employees happy and healthy, and uh, work with other companies that are like-minded and continue to just kick ass. Yeah, no, for sure. It's, it's everybody helping everybody is, is the best thing. Fighting with one another, just, you know, it's, it's always, you know, me and Lenny have, we've never had a fight. You know, we've had disagreements. It's, it's actually, Lenny and I. but Lenny whatever. and I. Lenny and you. <laughs> As in your. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, no, it's, it's you know, we have, we've had our struggles here and there, but it's never been anything serious. You know, we've never talked for, you know, longer than three days probably before somebody sends a message or whatever, but. We've always worked together and moved forward. And whenever we've had a problem with injectors, or possibly it, lots of times it's not always the injector. You know, he gives us other avenues. Well, maybe check this or check that because he deals with, you know, this massive problems all the time. You know, all over North America. So we, he always comes up with different ideas for maybe you should try this or try that. And I reach out to other shop owners too. If I don't, if I don't get something and have never seen it, I'll reach out to somebody and say, Hey, have you ever seen this? You know, just because the customer in the end result is what we want to get down the road. And, and most shops are like that. Like their end result is they just want the truck fixed and the customer down the road and not see him again until there's another problem or he wants to buy something else. That's, you know, that when we started this, the diesel performance industry, uh, I remember telling people when I was starting this company back in like 98, 99, 2000, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to start up a diesel hot rod shop. And people looked at me like I had three eyeballs. Yeah. Like, what is diesel hot rod? There was no such thing. A diesel was a lunky, noisy, diesel stinky, nasty, slow junker. And if you were fortunate, you had propane injection and an aftermarket <laughs> turbo bolted on like an IDI, right? Super slow, super painful. But then when the Cummins stuff came out and Power Stroke started coming out, it was programming and injectors, programming injectors. And I thought, man, a hot rod diesel shop is going to be the way of the future. And back then, people thought that, you know, I quit a perfectly good government job to go broke. And here we are 20, is it 22, 23 years later? Yeah. Yeah, we're 15 years, us. 
That's nuts. It's a long time, yeah. That's... I'm going to get shirts made that say aged 23 years. Yeah. You should get them to say aged probably 15. double that. When you own a shop, it's like double. Yeah, when I own a shop, years. it was yeah. it actually doubled my, so it's it, like 30 it half my life expectancy. Yeah. yeah. Between yeah. kids and a shop, I'm surprised I'm alive. Yeah. I do have gray hair, though. My memory's horrible. But I get young people here. That's what you email for. You just email yourself or text I yourself. I text myself a lot. You should do that, yeah. Then I even That's forget I to check those. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because <laughs> you get so many emails, and then the one you sent is so far down, it's like, yeah. Yeah, I haven't checked an email. Like, people call me, and they're like, hey, dude, did you check that email? I'm like, it's in the, I mean, I can grab my phone, but. There's got to be 25,000 emails I haven't read in there. Yeah, I can't do that. My OCD has to be at zero there. I have to He is go OCD. Through. Yeah. Very OCD. Dude showed up at my house. He goes in the bedroom, and he tears the sheets off and the bedspread off, runs upstairs and washes them. So we have to stay up late at night, you know, having uh, uh, soda pops and uh, waiting for the sheets to get clean and dry. That's some OCD. I don't sleep well, so it's got to be, things got to be set right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. So I'm perky in the morning. You know, I'm perky, I am. Yeah. You're not perky. Yeah. You, no. you wake up later than me, and you're not that perky. Caffeine, you should try it. I've tried it. I don't know what tastes good. I mean, I think it's like whiskey. It's, a, it's an acquired taste. Probably, I don't like. I like whiskey, yeah. Yeah. Not coffee. But that's Coca-Cola, so it's not Pumpkin right. spice, I can, eat, I can have one of those. Or yeah. peppermint mocha. Those are good. Peppermint mocha is good. Yeah. Pumpkin spice is very, uh, it's vanilla. Like, it's just a, it's a simple white girl drink. Yeah. You got to get it sugar I only get those when I come down here, though. Fat free, sugar free, pumpkin spice. Those are the Sparkle Birches and Duramax. Mm -hmm. Whoa. I might buy a Duramax. I'm actually thinking about buying a Duramax Dually. Pull the bed off, put a flat bed on it, be able to haul the snow machines, and then, you know, throw the camper in the middle of it. You should. I, you I, need another truck. Like yeah, that was sarcasm, wasn't it? That sarcasm? The sarcasm. It's hard getting around your in your driveway because there's so many trucks parked. It's there. just snow. That's the problem. Well, it's heavy. You can't road. push the snow because the trucks are in the way. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a second generation problem with Dodge pickups. Well, those are cool, but yeah, you, you started buying them at the wrong time. Like five years ago, they would have been half price. It would have been cheaper, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I, I couldn't afford it then. I was still paying off tools. Yeah. I can't afford it now. I'm still buying off tools. Yeah. yeah. Now, actually, brings me to a good point. Donovan's taking the Armadillo number three, and um, we've got another company, uh, the Diesel Dudes in Seattle, that are getting another one here pretty soon. Um, so they'll be coming in. They're going to get a couple days training, just same as you. Uh, that stand is a little bit smaller, but their marketplace is a little bit different than the marketplace you're in because you've got, I mean, every truck up there's a thousand horse daily, it seems like. Everybody wants one. Mm -hmm. So we're getting him set up with something. There's a really large number of people in the, uh, on the I-5 corridor right there in the Seattle area kind of a thing. So we'll get him set up here in the next few weeks. That test stand is going to get wired up right now today. And we're going to put the boots to that test stand for two, three weeks. We'll invite them in, get them set up for training. Then they're going to take that out of here because, because we have another of the new style test stands coming in. And we're really excited about that because... All of the test stands that we have right now, basically, they give us a number, and they're not exactly the same. And that's really, like, OCD kind of kicks in. It's a little bit frustrating. They're all close enough numbers that everything works just fine, runs just fine. Nobody's ever going to be able to nitpick it. But when you take an injector from one, two, or three, and it's different, it's really frustrating. Yeah. So the test plans that are in your stand, those test plans will make injectors run. But when I've got all of the guys down here building injectors, all those test lines really need to be the same, and they're not. So because of that, uh, we've, we've decided to switch brands, and that brand promises us that through the internet and whatever Wi-Fi magic happiness, they'll be able to calibrate the flow meters to make sure that they're going to be able to run the test stand like at night when we're not even here, and they'll be able to calibrate that test stand and if we put that injector in the same injector in another test stand tomorrow, they'll be able to calibrate that one to make it run the exact same and spit out the same numbers via Wi-Fi, basically. So that's, cool. that's really cool because then that injector will be a master that nobody ever touches, and it will get shipped back to the uh, OEM, the people that made the stand, 
and they're going to run that injector there on their properly calibrated, perfectly zeroed in, dialed in stuff. And then they'll be able to ship it back to us and they'll be able to edit those test plans to make sure that my test stands would read the exact same thing as the motherships. Yeah. So super cool, really neat technology. And with the amount of power that people are making and with the speed of the injection events and the pressure that we're dealing with, the accuracy just kind of has to be there. So I'm, I'm super stoked about that. And we've also got another test stand coming this month as well. Like they're already on a boat. They land in New York on January. The future shortly. In the future, a day, December? I think they land December 6th, they land. Yeah, I'm supposed to get them this month. So December 6th, I forgot we're in December already. I'm super stoked about that. Christmas, Christmas carols. Christmas, yeah. Santa Claus. This dude makes me so happy. Lenny's been playing Christmas carols every morning. That's why I got speakers in every yeah. room. Yeah. You don't have to have it very loud. It's Christmas it's is gonna, everywhere. Christmas carols are gonna come soon enough and they don't, They're here. Go, they don't go away until. Until after yeah. Christmas. It, like December, your boxing day is the day after Christmas, right? Oh, they're still playing. It's the worst day ever. Boxing Day? Yeah. Well, it depends. You have 364 days before the next Christmas. Well, yeah, I guess. Yeah. So you look at it that way. Like if you look at pain, suffering, daily life, daily grind, just to get back to Christmas. If Christmas is every day, everybody would be a lot happier. Yeah, and broke. <laughs> <laughs> We're there now. We just keep buying ourselves new. And you just keep eating turkey dinner every night. That's one on Thanksgiving. Yeah. You don't have turkeys at Christmas. Here? Most people do like prime rib or ham or something different. Oh, not I think a lot of people get burned out on turkeys. Canada's turkey and ham for Christmas. Oh, turkey and ham? Yeah, mostly. I have ham on Easter. The irony in that is pretty thick, I know. <laughs> <laughs> nice work. Yeah, yeah. Rabbits are like, ha ha, there goes the pig. Yeah. No, so anyways, um, <laughs> we've got two new test stands coming this month. I'm going to be traveling uh, next month to go look at some more tools and machines. Uh, the future of the company is really good. The future of all of our dealer network is really good. What are your numbers like? How'd you do in, in November this year? Our best year, best month ever. Best month in, ever. In 15 years, yeah. So economy is miserable. Yeah. Best month ever. Yeah. I know a lot of the WDs out there are slaying it right now, killing it, crushing numbers. And I feel like it's based on the fact that nobody can go buy a new truck. Yeah. So they're having to edit, fix, make better old trucks. Same yeah, we've, we've sold more motors. Like we rebuild Cummins in-house. We've sold more motors in the last year than we probably sell in a, in a normal five-year period. Really? Like just insane. Amount. You told me the number, and I was like, damn, that's a lot. Yeah. Like, that's... like Justin's building two, three motors a week, and we're shipping. We don't install them all. We ship them out, too. But, yeah, yeah it's crazy how it's just everything. Everybody's fixing their old stuff because the new stuff's too expensive or they can't get it or... You know, when you order a Ford F-450 and it's 9 to 12 months down the road. And $105,000. Yeah, you can't. It just doesn't work. hundred and five grand, dude. Yeah. Like, is that you Canadian? could be... Is that Canadian? Or no, no, that'd be like $7 million yeah, Canadian. Exactly. But if anybody in America needs to buy anything right now, go to Canada. Wow. 40% off. It's 40% off. Yeah. I'm getting ready to buy a Jaws exhaust pipe silencer thingy for my new sled. Yeah. So if the sled shows up, I'll buy the pipe. Or I should buy the pipe before the sled shows up. I have it ready. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. But we're killing it. We're slaying injectors like no other. Um, injectors are kind of a funny thing because they come in waves, which I believe the wave is, you know, LB7. The injectors are kind of like really hard and crappy at first. They made them better. But the truck's still a 2001 truck, 2003 truck. That wave kind of hits, and then it starts to settle down because a bunch of those trucks get ruined, oh, yeah. destroyed, totaled, whatever. They're off the road. That number starts to drop. Uh, the Cummins 5.9 comes in because it's built, you know, 03 to 07. And uh, then that wave starts to settle down. And recently we've seen an uptake big time on later style Duramax stuff and on Cummins 6.7 stuff. Yeah, we sold some LB7 stuff talking with Ashley. Like, she's never sold them in years. And all of a sudden, two or three sets in the last couple of months, it's like. Have you had anybody complain about prices? Um, yes and no, not really. Some guys, it's just inevitable you're going to get it all the time. Sure, but yeah. It's, it's not as bad, no, because, and just because we, well, we have it, right? Most places don't have it. Other yeah. injector shops up there, the, you know, the bigger ones, they don't have them. Yeah. And we, our plan is to have it. You know, Lenny has it, so we want to have it. And it's just because if you have it and guys need it, then it's going to sell. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's so, been, that's been like Matt, everybody in my crew, I said, hey, guys, you know, like, this COVID thing 
it's either the next zombie apocalypse or it's a it's a play on games because there's a presidential election coming. What do you want to do? And they, you know, I gave them the option: do we turtle as a company, or do we like sprint, run with scissors, and try and cut the rubber, the the rubber, the the ribbon, the ribbon, yeah, before anybody else? And yep. everybody in the crew said, let's cut the ribbon. What's well, yeah? What do you do? Do you just sit there idle and just keep idling, or do you you know do you keep moving forward and spending money on new products to help nope. the customers? You know, we just bought a building. You know, a year ago, it's it's going to be it's a year ago this month. Yeah, we bought you know eleven thousand square feet. We doubled in size, and and I'm like, how did we get along without this before? Because we still don't have enough room. Still have enough seems, room. Yeah. yeah, that's. I mean, every time I buy a tool, which you've been here a few years ago now, because COVID. It's been a while. Yeah. And uh, well, I guess Jesse Gillespie's wedding was the last time you we were here. Yeah. And that was what two years ago, probably. He just yeah. had a baby. Congrats, Jesse. Yeah. Um, so you were here a couple of years ago, and you, like one of your comments was, dude, there's a lot more machines here. Yeah. And it's true, because these machines, with, with supply lines being so chinky, not being able to get parts, you have to really be able to do some stuff on your own. So we've been having to invest more in machines, and I want to thank every single customer for being a part of what we're doing. You are helping us build your future and your happiness in your own vehicle. All of that money is being reinvested in tools and other shops that we can network with and neighbor with and partner with. We're, we're basically, I want every one of my customers to think of themselves as like a dynamite diesel player, like you're on my team. And we're gonna continue to get better. Like we're, in the aftermarket industry, my goal is to be pretty much self-sufficient. So we're working with people all around the world right now. Um, man, I'm just, I'm really proud of every one of you customers that's using us and trusting us to let us be a part of your engine, and obviously the guys that we're working with, all of our dealer network. Um, Donovan is the very first guy, not the last, but he's the first guy that's got this program set up. And the reason why I didn't just offer it to anybody is because like Donovan and I have had you know plenty of like FU conversations over the UCC truck and whatever. But like you say, after three or four days, we get over it and we get behind and then we move on. I think on. he only said FU after you hung up. It was probably during. It was more like F you and then poof. Yeah, yeah, could have been. <laughs> Actually, you didn't, now it's just F you. Clear. <laughs> that's that's going to be your new when it comes up when you call. That, yeah, it's actually, I'm just going to change your name. Yeah. Yeah, Siri, F you. <laughs> exactly. Call Calling F you. <laughs> there you go. That's it. Uh, you know, I'm pretty much out of words. How about you? I had, didn't have many when we started, so that's know, true. I did that's pretty true. good. I think you did. Yeah. yeah. Canadians. Guys, Lenny Reed, Down and Products, out with my buddy. Donovan Harris, Armour Inc., Diesel Suspension. There we go. Later! <laughs>